What struck me about the gospel passage today was the fact that just moments before in the gospel reading was the Annunciation. Mary, no possibly older than 15 years old, had been called by God to bear his son. And in the midst of that, Mary's concern wasn't the fact that she was holding this baby, it was the fact that her older cousin Elizabeth was pregnant as well. I had the opportunity a few years ago through seminary to spend a semester in the Holy Land. And one of the sites that we got to visit was in Ein Karem, the Church of the Visitation. And Ein Karem now looks kind of like Beverly Hills. <laughs> it's kind of weird. There's luxury stores. Some of my classmates paid $20 for gelato. But what was so poignant about that location is the fact that this church was up on a hill. To get there was difficult even for a car. And yet Mary, in the midst of her pregnancy, without delay, went out and reached Elizabeth. Mary is the epitome of what it means to love with no cost, self-sacrificial, self-giving love. That is who the Blessed Mother is. And so even in the midst of her own struggle with pregnancy, she doesn't just visit Elizabeth, she takes care of her. For three months, it's always interesting to me that the gospel ends so abruptly. And Mary was there for three months. This wasn't just a quick visit. This is what a family member has done for her beloved. I am here to prepare the way. And this is interesting about the Blessed Mother because whenever she speaks in scripture, it's almost as time stops. You listen to mom. When mom speaks, you're done talking. And what does she say in the scripture today? Elizabeth esteems Mary. Blessed are you among women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. Even Elizabeth can tell that Mary is special, that Mary has to do something that no one else in history will ever do, give birth to Christ. And Mary, if she had even the smallest bit of pride, could have said, yes, I am really special. I'm great. But no, she doesn't. She gives us one of the most powerful prayers in the scriptures, the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Not once does Mary take any credit for her role in salvation history. The very beginning of salvation history begins with a 15-year-old girl. But she doesn't take that credit. In her unique authority, she shows us what it means to truly be a disciple, not one that promotes power, prestige, vanity. She shows us what it means to be a true disciple, sacrificial, self-giving love. The entire being of who she was was dedicated to Jesus Christ. And so what is so unique about Mary is the fact that not only did she do these things, she was free from sin. She still had to suffer like the rest of us. So uniquely, intimately in tuned with her and her son, knowing from the very beginning of his birth that he was gonna give up his life for all of us. And just like us, she had to witness her child suffer on the cross. If Mary wanted to, she could have demanded that there be another way. If Mary wanted to, she could have told Jesus to do literally anything else. But she shows us the beauty of true, authentic motherhood. 
She does not force her child to, any, to do anything. But with loving guidness, kindness, guides them towards God. She is our mother. And so uniquely intertwined she is in our own faith lives. She shows us what it means to truly love. She, tr- she shows us what it truly means to follow Christ. And her reward was being able to be assumed body and soul into heaven. She shows us that there is hope in the resurrection just by saying yes to what Jesus Christ has asked for us. Amen.